Hello, this is Dread, and in today's video topic, we're going to be going over Void Well, Erasing Strike, Shattered Lance, Void Knight. So, if you are working on Lance Epoch currently, if you're currently employed by 11th Hour Games, I would heavily suggest looking at the kittens on the screen. Yes, look at those instead of whatever's going on on screen. You don't need to see that at all. All right. Now the average attention span of a human being has gone about, we can talk about the build, as I don't really want EHE watching this because they're going to nerf it because it's fun. So if you're paying attention to the gameplay, you can probably see my mana. It's going crazy. Why is it going crazy? That is because of the newly reworked Voidwell. This was reworked, I think, this patch or last patch. I can't remember exactly. I think it was this patch. And essentially, the concept of Voidwell is if you have three void essences while you're at negative mana, and it just keeps checking for it, by the way, it's not like a, a conditional thing. It just keeps checking if you're under negative mana constantly, like ticking. Uh, it will consume three void essences, and it will set you at 30% of your maximum mana. Now, this is very strong, as you can tell. I have well over 500 plus mana on my Void Knight, meaning that whenever the Void Well procs, I get to about like 170-ish mana. And that is a lot. That is a lot. That's more mana than certain builds uh, ever get. So, yeah. Void Well is insane. Now, of course, Void Well makes sense for the most part because, you know, Void essences are only getting, like, you can only get them on kill, except for a racing strike. A racing strike has a 100% chance to gain a void essence on crit with this node. That means that we can build all around a racing strike and have a hell of a time constantly consuming mana and removing mana and then gaining mana. It's amazing. The best thing about it is it sets my mana to 30% so I can do whatever the hell I want in that three second period as long as I generate three void essences. Now, I do want to say I have been on the receiving end for when I do not generate those three void essences before the time runs out and I run out of mana. Essentially, I had to reset boss fights because of it. So it's not all, you know, nice and dandy sometimes. If you're not paying attention, uh, you can run out of Void Essences. Now, of course, uh, if you're good at the game and actually paying attention to what you're doing, you'll never actually run out of Void Essences. It's just sometimes Dread is a ding-dong, and it will happen sometimes. Now, this build is unironically going to be one of the cheapest builds I've ever made. Why is that? Well, that is because... The only uniques I'm using are all boss drops. So like, for instance, we're using a peak of the mountain with no LP, mind you. We're using double shattered lance and, of course, the shattered lance, lance relic. Now, why are we using the shattered lance setup? Well, that is because the shattered lance set gives us a very, 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 very large amount of damage. Uh, I think we're getting like well over like 800 and 900 percent increased melee uh, uh increased melee cold and we get a bunch of flat melee cold thanks to our weapons these weapons don't have base crit on them or attack speed but guess what the racing the racing strike doesn't really care about either because we get plenty throughout the tree and all that and a racing strike has nine percent base crit meaning that we can build around a racing strike and since we're building around health regen we can go with a nifty item like peak of the mountain giving us a very large amount of critical strike chance, which will apply to our racing strikes crit, meaning that we get a lot of free crit for no investment, essentially, thanks to the fact that we're a health regen build. Because normally, if you're playing a racing strike build, you'd be leeching off your crits, but we're not leeching off our crits. We don't really need to because, of course, we have 800 regen constantly, which is great because sigils are insanely strong. Now, that's pretty much it. Like, that's... The whole concept of the build now for gearing i will say now the best like the most important thing for you to get on this build is currently a tier seven flat mana roll on your body armor now the reason why that is is because for some reason i don't know why this is tier seven mana rolls all the way up to 150 flat on your body armor okay it rolls 
very, very high for no reason whatsoever. So this is like essentially what I would call your buy-in, in my opinion. And of course, getting mana on the amulet, you only need like tier six on the gloves, tier six, stuff like that. But for some reason, I don't know why, it just has so much mana. Now, it's thanks to the fact that we don't need that many prefixes for our build to function because, you know, all we need is crit at this point to make our build function. Uh, it means that we can stack mana everywhere. We can stack attunement on prefixes on rings if we wanted to. We can stack flat mana on our gloves, like everywhere, just flat mana everywhere. And that makes up for the fact that, you know, like it, it's great. And the reason why we can do this, why we can afford this is because of the Shattered Lance set, because, you know, we have well over 800% increased damage. We don't need much more, so we can go with flat mana instead, because normally on a normal Void Knight, you would need like percent damage with Echo, stuff like that. And now you could play this build as a normal Void Knight, right? You could play it with Void Bacon, you could play it with Apathy's Maw, you could play with Dewilled Void Weapons, you could do whatever the heck you wanted. I just chose Shattered Lance because I like Damouge. Now, with all that being said, uh, if you haven't already, I'd heavily suggest leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. And if you're an EHG employee and you've been watching this long, hopefully you understand that even though we are resetting our mana constantly, this build is not really that overpowered, so please don't nerf Void well. Now, with all that being said, let's go in game and talk about the build some more, shall we? All right, here we are in game with the Erasing Strike build. So this time around, there's not really too much of a like skill rotation. You're kind of just spamming the ever living fuck out of Erasing Strike. Like, sure, you can turn on your anomaly and make sure that your sigils are up, but mm -hmm. apparently. We generate so much mana with our uh with our void well setup that we can actually cast a sigil every single time it procs and still be positive mana for everything else that we do, which is really cool. Of course, you know, our abyssal echoes on single target, and we kind of just go ham. It's really fun. Now, let's go into uh skill, shall we? So for a racing strike, we take one point travel into obliteration. We're not a void damage build. Three points into Prophet's Onslaught. This base crit is amazing. Three points in essence of the end. This is the main reason why this build functions, is getting the ability to generate void essences on bosses. Two points into the crit multi because I really like crit multi. We're critting a bunch, we want more damage. Two points travel to merciful. Five points in Erasure of Living, that Krell Threshold is pretty cool, and also as all 50% more damage is amazing. One point travel into Time Loop. Time Loop, we kind of don't like. We really don't like Time Loop. We like spamming the 33 cost Erasing Strike. We don't like spamming the 60 mana Erasing Strike. We're not building into the Echo stuff, so it doesn't really benefit us that much. I mean, it does give us extra Erasing Strikes. It helps our clear out and all that. But generally, we really don't want more points into this. And of course, one point to shatter continuity. This uh, this is amazing. Being able to spam a racing strike with no cooldown, it makes it so we can abuse Void well to its fullest. Then two points into Chamber of Fate. This is kind of our uh, payoff for going this route, getting 50% more damage for free, especially on a skill like a racing strike, which has like, I think, 450% added damage effectiveness, which is insane. And all that combined equals a really fun skill. Now, let's talk about the next skill. So the next skill is going to be just generic reversal. All we care about is the attack speed, of course. We care about the increased damage taken from the enemy. And of course, uh, we do take these notes, Traveler's Fatigue. But these are just additive with the rest of our health regen. So it's not really that big of a deal. Then one point into time, like we, we grab all the normal stuff that an erasing strike build would obviously grab. Now, uh, Abyssal Echoes here. Abyssal Echoes has two functions. First things off, we are playing a bonk build. Bonk builds generally don't generate that much armor shred. Of course, we're attacking a little bit more often, but the problem is we're running double set weapon, meaning that we don't really have that much access to armor shred on most gear and we kind of don't have slots for it. So we use Abyssal Echoes in combination with Screaming Rifts and Streaking Echoes. So whenever we place it down, it casts it a bunch. And the main reason why we like that is so we can go access to Rippling Corrosion and Tides of Rust. 
This allows us to get to close to the armor shred cap pretty easily uh, with abusing, you know, abyssal echoes for armor shred. It's really nice. Now, of course, four points into embrace the darkness for the 20% more damage and 20% attack speed. This is great as we want attack speed to be able to spam our abyssal echoes. And we also want the more damage because, you know, a build that wants more damage. Now, of course, uh, we go for myopia. Abyssal Decay now blinds enemies. Uh, the main reason we can actually go for this is because we're not specifically grabbing Potent Corruption like normal builds would, because we want to be able to apply Blind or our own Embrace the Darkness. Now, of course, you must be wondering, Dread, why aren't you taking the 60% more damage to Void Supremacy? Well, there's two reasons for this. The first reason is we possibly could not cast this enough to keep the buff up. We could not possibly cast Abyssal Echoes enough to keep it up for every single swing of a Racing Strike. We are in a Racing Strike spammy build. This node is meant for an Racing Strike build that wants to hit once and done, right? And that's the main reason. The second reason. So for some reason, uh, in some cases, it seems like, whenever you grab Screaming Rifts, Abyssal Echoes now creates an Abyssal Rift at the target location that casts Abyssal Echoes for you. Uh, this is very weird and it interacts weirdly with the rest of the tree. So like for instance, this node directly using Abyssal Echoes has a chance to cast a Void Rift from each nearby orb, right? So specifically it says directly cast. So here, it's we're not actually casting Abyssal Echoes, right? Whenever we use Abyssal Echoes, we're casting something that casts Abyssal Echoes for us. So it's proccing. So in theory, it might not work for Void Supremacy, I'm not entirely sure. You could try it out. Like I said, it wouldn't really be too much of a damage increase. I would rather go for things like the armor shred, go for things like the embrace the darkness for the attack speed, but to each their own. Of course, if you could solve your uh, armor shred in a different way, you could get rid of a bunch of these nodes and then go for this node and be just fine. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how I would feel about it though. I'd have to try it out. And that's pretty much it for Abyssal Echoes. Now for sigils here, we are running a five sigil setup. That is because sigils, if you don't know, they give 30% health regen. And of course it gets doubled with mediation. That means that we get a very large amount of health regen from our sigils, as you can tell. We get a nice amount of health regen and that's giving us a very large amount of increased damage, which is great. So we want to have as many sigils as possible. So which we do. So we're grabbing polygram, tetragram, so we have five sigils in total. We have the sigils on kill, so we have it in the monoliths. And then, like I said, we generate so much mana with our current setup that we can actually just cast sigils once but whenever our void well procs and be completely fine on sigils. And that's pretty much it for sigils. Now for anomaly here, it's your stereotypical anomaly setup, except we don't go for the leech because we can't leech from our crits thanks to Peak of the Mountain, so we don't need the leech stuff. So we go for the cooldown recovery speed for Anomaly itself, the attack and cast speed, which is great. We go for the crit chance here. This helps us cap our crit out. And of course, we go for all the time bubble stuff. And that just gives us a nice buff. And that's pretty much it for the skills. Now, let's talk about the important passives. Of course, do wield, of course. We want to grab as much percent health regen and flat HP everywhere. One of the biggest problems with, of course, the set that we're running currently, right? The Chattered Lance set is we're running a lot of health regen. As you can tell, health regen, health regen, right? Eventually health regen on the helmet. This means that we need a lot of slots that aren't HP, meaning that to make up for that, which Void Knight is very good at doing, by the way, we can make it up by grabbing a bunch of flat health everywhere, which is great. Now for Paladin here, we just want the flat HP. The attunement's nice, because every point of attunement is extra mana. It's like two extra mana. The more mana that we get, the more smooth our gameplay is. Uh, right now, I'm at 547, like I said, but you could go much higher and be more comfortable. I just went for 547 because that's all I could handle right now. Eventually you could get mana on your peak of the mountain and have even more mana. But right now, this is the amount that I'm stuck with. Now, for Void Knight here, I am grabbing World Eater. That is mainly because like, 
I don't know what else to take. Uh, it's kind of like nonsensical, like the rest of these notes. So we grab World Eater because the Abyssal Echoes, whenever I put it on the ground, it does leech a decent amount for us unironically because we're stacking Vitality. Uh, we're stacking percent damage. Like it, it kind of leeches a little bit for us. So like it's like just extra sustain, right? Of course, Void Corruption giving us a lot of crit multi this makes up for the fact that we're running weapons with no crit multi on them of course uh just like i said grabbing hp hp uh we only have like about 11 22 percent 22 percent from the tree and then 10 percent. so we have like 32 percent chance to of course echo i'll be honest i haven't really felt too big of a difference between grabbing all these nodes and not grabbing all these nodes. Now, of course, I'm only level 93. You could fill out these nodes. I'll be honest, I haven't really felt a difference. Now, of course, we're grabbing points in the future mind. Eventually, we'd cap out future mind because flat mana is really strong for us. 10 points in eternal form because, like I said, we need HP, the movement speed here. And of course, the whole node, the whole build is built around Void Well. This is very important. Like I said in the uh, intro here, we get Void Essences, we consume them to set our mana to 30% of our maximum mana pool. We could be negative 50,000 and it would still set our mana to 30%, which is really nice. Uh, probably a way to abuse that later in the future. All right, that's pretty much it for the passives. Now for uh, Blessings here, Crit Multi, of course, we want as much Crit Multi as possible. Uh, Health regen, this helps us out and get uh, a decent amount of base health regen. Rain of Dragons here, Crit of Void, of course, and then Armor and Armor, of course. And that's pretty much it for the Blessings. Now for the Idols, I am grabbing an absolute gigaton of percent HP Idols and Res Idols. That is because we have plenty of percent increased damage, and that's mainly what you get from Idols. So just getting all this res means we can run much more egregious items, like for instance, stuff like this, stuff like this, and stuff like that. Then we can run stuff like this, and it means that we don't need that much in terms of resistances. And of course, we grab a Throne of Ambition, because not only does it give us more armor, which is great on a single target, it also gives us 40% more cold damage. Normally, you couldn't take advantage of this as an Erasing Strike build, but we are a very special Erasing Strike build, which is cool. That's pretty much it for the idols now for gearing peak of the mountain this is very easy this drops from tier one under the mountain meaning that you can very easily get your own very quickly uh you can get an lp one eventually you can get like health regen health percent mana on it that would be amazing now the other required items double shard of the shattered lance this is a normal drop from uh where, what's his name here uh the stolen lance timeline right so we get two of these that are decently rolled. And of course we grab a Fragments of the Shattered Lance, which is a rare drop from them, which is like a 10% chance. And all of those combined mean that we can play this build. I would heavily suggest farming Stolen Lance before doing this and getting these items, same thing with this. And then you could play this build. Now, of course you could play this build with a different setup with like a Void setup if you really wanted to take the whole concept and use a Void bake Bacon instead. Now, Void Bacon has a really low LP level, so it would probably be very easy to do so. Now, of course, like I said, I'm just doing Shattered Land shenanigans. Now, for the chest here, like I said, tier 7 mana, as you can tell, that rolls really high. If you're wondering, tier 5 mana rolls for 50, or I think 60 mana, so that's a gigantic difference. Now, instead of that percent health regen, you probably want percent uh, I mean, flat life. But I didn't really get to choose what was on this. Eventually, you'd want for a Dawn Plate for flat, more flat armor. That's the beautiful thing about this build is I've barely invested into it. You could invest significantly more than I currently have. Now for the Amulet here, flat mana, tier 6. Eventually, you'd want tier 7. Uh, you know, Cold Pen is really strong because we're not running Cold Shred. So Cold Pen would be great. Or Crit Multi, that would be great too. Or Crit Chance. Then Res, HP, Health Regen would be great there too. I have Sealed Crit Chance, which is cool. Uh, Oracle Amulet's cool, but to be honest, we probably want a Res Amulet so that we can run more uh, HP idols. And for one ring, we're grabbing a Fair Boris Persistence. That is because it gives us a large amount of flat health regen. And of course, it gives us a large amount of flat armor. Of course, it gives us resistance. 
So all of this combined is a very good piece into our build. Gives us a lot of increased damage, gives us a lot of armor. Eventually you'd want another Ferbor's Persistence on your other ring slot once you have a better gear set than I do. Belt here, HP, health. Eventually you want Cleanse on the belt as well. I don't have Cleanse. I managed to seal some Endurance. That's really nice because I was lacking a little bit on Endurance. Then of course I have a Copper Ring in the other slot with Crit Avoid. I have Health, Attunement. This Attunement, like I said, is the best prefix for us other than, you know, Crit Chance. And that is because it gives us flat mana. The more flat mana we get, the better the build will feel. Then of course Gloves here. Flat mana tier 6, crit chance, uh, eventually you'd want tier 5 crit chance, health regen, health, and it's on a decent base. Boots here, strength, you probably want to tune it there instead, although strength is nice because armor, right? Movement speed, health regen, health, right? I don't have a movement skill, so we need more movement speed elsewhere. Also as well, this gives us 20% more movement speed when we're going through monoliths because we kill stuff, right? Which is great. It's for a long time too. And of course our relic, as you can tell, gives us health regen, melee damage. What else would you want? And that's pretty much it for the build. That's pretty much it for me. With all that being said, this has been Dread. Off to go. Work on something else. Bye!